So God knows if I had had a decent serve or a decent backhand where my life would be, um, but not having a good one sure has paid off. John, if you can please describe the most eventful, memorable, and impactful week of your life, uh, with a tagline, of course, uh, the floor is yours whenever you're ready to go, good sir. Uh, so I guess my tagline would be jumpstart. Um, and like Buster, it's familiar in that it, it is one that sort of set me on the course of where I sit today. Quick college refresher course, big quiet place with all the books, that's the library. Big loud place with all the people, that's the football stadium. I think the first thing I had to do, obvious, is I'm like, okay, how many weeks have I been alive? And it's been 3,059. So I'm like, that's a lot to choose from. And which one, which one fits in there? Um, and I've had a lot of really cool and great weeks in my life. But I'm trying to think of one that, you know, most altered uh, my fate, which happened when I was a junior in high school. I was not a very big kid. I'm now 6'2 and overweight. At the time, I was about 5'11 and a half and 120. I had to stop... I couldn't walk over sewer grates for fear I'd fall down them. Uh, would have been a perfect supermodel at the time. I was like a size two. All I did growing up, my whole life was sports. Everything I did, I was whether I was playing in the street, playing tackle the bum, wiffle, but whatever it is, we were playing whatever was in season all the time and making up games. And, and we were reading every Sports Illustrated article we could. Everybody that played on Saturday afternoons, whether it was football or the game of the week, was my hero that I wanted to be. And so sports had dominated my life and I was not big enough to really succeed. But I started to grow in my junior year in high school, and I'm on the tennis team. I was not a great tennis player. I was like the 13th man on the tennis team. So we only had so many courts, so I didn't have time. So I would have to wait to play. So in the interim, I walked over to the track, and my good friend Terry Nickish was a high jumper on that team. And when I was a kid, I wanted to be Dwight Stones, who was the greatest high jumper in the world, and set several world records, and twice was an Olympic medalist. And I had done some of it with my buddy in a basement. And I'm so I go over there and I make, I'll just high jump with Terry. And it turns out I was pretty good at it. I had grown enough and had a modicum of ability that uh, I was over there jumping and now I just was beating him consistently. And so I was not in a hurry to go back to tennis practice. And the track coach came by one day and he just like, who are you? Like, who's this guy that's just over here beating the guy that's my high jumper? That was like a Thursday when he saw me and he said, uh, well, you, I'm like, who are you? I'm, well, I'm the 13th man on the tennis team. He goes, well, you work for me now. So on Monday and Tuesday, I was on the tennis team. I'd gotten dusted on a Tuesday doubles match. And Thursday, the coach recruited me and Friday went to practice and Saturday was the Green Bay City champion in the high jump. And then my senior year, I had an unbelievable, I went out the next year, my senior year, and was great at it. Had the second best jump in the height, in the state for which I called the guy at the University of Missouri and said, hey, could I come down and run for you? And he said, yes. So then I ended up in Missouri and I ended up with what is the first and best journalism school in the country, which sets me on my way to a journalism career that goes through Tulsa and goes through Phoenix and ends up at ESPN. And then when ESPN says, you know what, one day, this happens to all of us, um, even heavyweight champs, they say, there's no more money. This is as much as we can pay. And they said, is there anything else you want to do? And I said, well, I've, I've kind of always loved track all my life. And um, so if there's any way I can cover track. And so now, out of that, I cover, last week, the NCAA championships. I do the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon, SEC championships. And so this whole full circle for being a really lousy tennis player and being good enough to jump a little bit ends up, here I am. I mean, my whole life has changed. Uh, because I go over there and I jump a little bit and it turns out I'm okay at it. And it literally sets me on my whole career path that I had no idea. So God knows if I had had a decent serve or a decent backhand where my life would be, um, but not having a good one sure has paid off. And John, you won the lotto. You won the lotto and you, you didn't just squander it all away. And here you are, long, illustrious career, able to give back because you won the lotto years and years ago by not having a good forehand and backhand. <laughs> uh -oh. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're talking karaoke on Friday, debate on Saturday, 
and a relaxing time on the boat as you're fishing, who would you select if you could select a historical fin figure for each night, Mr. Mr. John Anderson? Well, first, let me say, uh, thank God I only have to go three rounds with the former heavyweight champion of the world because I want no part of you for 12. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. Uh, I want to go to karaoke with Frank Sinatra. Fly me to the moon. Let me play up there with those stars. Uh, I think if he came, then inevitably I'd hang out with Dean Martin. With Memory and for hours you just chilled on the mind. Which would be great. <laughs> There's a very good chance I could end up uh, on a plane to Bombay um, Saturday for the debate. Um, like. Buster Douglas, I have uh, I have gone with a former president as well. Uh, but I want to hang out with Thomas Jefferson. Perhaps the art of life is the art of avoiding pain. Both A, I think he's a brilliant man. He is, you know, we're here in this republic because of him and his and, and the founding fathers. Um, I would love to hear him answer some of the things that he put in um, to our document that, that, you know, that we have to answer for. Um, because I think he is often judged in 21st century looking glasses for a man who lived in the 1700s. But I think he would have some um, new opinions about what he wrote and what he had done in terms of who should be counted and how they should be counted and who should have the vote. I would love to hear what he has to say in a modern world. Uh, so he fascinates me and I think we should acknowledge that he was a unbelievably smart guy who did so much and give him a chance to defend his personal failings, um, which he had some, right? With with owning slaves, with Sally Hemings. Sally Hemings. So the man has personal failings to answer for, and I would like to get those answers from him in a modern world. And then the third one's really tricky, Avi, because uh, you mentioned that my father passed away when I was very young, six months old. There is nothing I hate worse in the world than fishing. Fishing isn't really a sport because the other side doesn't know it's playing. I can't imagine if Buster Douglas got in the ring and he had to tempt the other guy to fight him, but he could just stand in the corner and not bite on the hook. He could just stay there the whole time while he was in the middle of the ring. That to me is fishing. Like Buster's just out there like, let's go. And the other guy's like, really? I don't know. And then I'm going to go home. So I've never been a fisherman. It's very odd. I, I don't want to fish. My dad loved it. That's not who I would go fish with. Uh, I would have him for other things. So I'm gonna fish with Hemingway. Been working on a long novel, which is in the vaults of the bank here in Havana. Cause he wrote about it so well and he was out there. And again, a little like Frank Sinatra, I'm gonna end up in Key West. I'm gonna have too much rum. I'm gonna be in an alley. It's not gonna end beautifully. It's gonna, in fact, it's always gonna be ugly. Uh, in the end, but boy, am I going to have great stories. And in the end, that's what I'm in. That's what I'm in life for. I just want to be able to tell the stories. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, sing with Frank. I'm going to debate with uh, Thomas Jefferson, who, um, as Kennedy also said, in a room by himself, uh, you know, there's no more brilliant thinker. And, uh, and then I'm going to go with Hemingway and we're just going to get crazed. John, it's always best to seek out or is it, I guess, that's my question for you, is is it always best to seek out pleasure over avoiding pain? Yeah, I feel like at some point this might be out of my depth. I feel like my college philosophy class when um, it was a horrible midterm and I went back and the final came. There was only a paper, a midterm, and a final. And the final came and I got terribly sick the day of the final. I couldn't take it. And so I went back and I finally, when I, I rescheduled it and I went and took her, she said, you know, for some reason, I don't have your grade in here for your midterm. And I thought, wow, here's my opening. I can, you know, I can save myself because I just Nietzsche and the rest of the, I am, I am not getting this. And, uh, you know, free will and the whole thing. And, but I, I, I guess in a moment of great philosophy, I, I told her the truth. I'm like, I got a 59. And so the only C I got in college was in philosophy, but I think I felt good about it because I think she just took pity on me. I don't know that I did any better on the final. I think she just went, okay, this guy, at least he's honest. So we're going to give him points on that. Um, I don't, I, I don't know that it's, it seems this binary choice, the way you word this, am I seeking pleasure or am I avoiding pain? I am all for avoiding pain, period. Now, so I don't know if that puts me in the camp of also seeking pleasure over it. 
um, like, can I have the middle ground? Like if pleasure's there and it's something and I can go. Um, but I, you know, I try to avoid pain and yet I play golf. So that can't, that, that doesn't happen. That's disaster. I heard all the time. Uh, um, but I've seen enough pain in my life between watching or hear my mom talk about, um, uh, my dad, I've seen, um, I've had my own, uh, things in life that were uh, a, uh, an engagement breakup. And I've been through a lot of painful stuff. And I think I would rather uh, avoid pain myself. And I would do whatever I could to avoid pain for others. Um, whether that's uh, making sure I don't cause it or finding a way to ease it from someone else. Um, so like I said, I, I think I'm going to go avoiding pain with the idea that I'm not necessarily chasing the pleasure. I would just like to make sure that, you know, um, somebody's not hurting. And then if we can move that and advance that to somewhere, um, then I'm for it. Uh, but like I said, I, I look at this and I think, I don't know that that's the straight binary choice. I think there's a, um, a middle ground there. Sometimes I'll leave it at this. Uh, sometimes I just would like life to cooperate with me and me cooperate with it. And I think that's the middle of it. Am I seeking pleasure? Am I avoiding pain? If I can just get life to cooperate with me every day, that's where I'd like to be. I love that. And thank you for exploring. You know, you really did explore that. And I appreciate that wholeheartedly. Um, I, I do have to bring this up because golf, gosh, everyone loves golf. But I find it interesting that the object of golf is to play the least amount of golf. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. But listen, I don't know that you're licensed to ask this question if you're going to continue to like the Knicks and be suffering. <laughs> the Knicks are this question, are they not? This, they are. This, this is the Knicks question is what we have here. We, we, we This is uncharted territory. Guys and gals and pals, we have someone other than yours truly insulting the Knicks. I love it. Let's tag team up. This is great. Around it. Two seconds to shoot. He drives. He shoots. He missed. He missed. He missed. We win. Uh, guys, Mr. John Anderson answered a question. Thank you guys for your uh, beautiful comments as well. We, we want to explore because that's how we make discoveries as people. And again, John Anderson did explore that, and we really appreciate that. I got to tell you, John, you do a lot of these, man. Did you have fun tonight, my friend? I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. Yeah, it was great.